праздником. The Archpriest John Kuchurov had finished divine services at St. Catherine Cathedral in Zarskoy Silo, the Tsar's village, and he was taken violently, rudely taken from the temple outside into the countryside where he was shot. Like his Lord and Savior, he was taken outside the city to be executed. That day, while very sad, was also the culmination, the fulfillment of St. John's entire life. We know so well how personally we know it as we stand and worship in this temple which he built. We know of his legacy of holiness. We know of his commitment to Christ and to the gospel. We know of his desire to educate the peoples of this land in the ways of orthodoxy, to educate them in the orthodox faith. He was, of course, also a husband and a father who lived his life as a married man dedicated to that commitment of marriage, to making Christ's love for his church known through his marriage and his family life. There's so many things that we can say of, of St. John, of his ministry, of his life, of his character, of his priesthood, of his commitment to Christ and the church. And so it makes sense if we look at it with the eyes of faith, we can see that his martyrdom was indeed the fulfillment of his life. He had given his entire life, all his energies, all his strength had been given to preaching the gospel, to proclaiming Christ. And why would it not be so that at the end of his life, he would give his very life to Christ, just as he has done from the day of his birth. There are those who might think that St. John would have fled Tsarskoy Silo because things were very violent already in, in those early days of the Bolshevik Revolution. And there in that town, there were already riots and fighting between Bolshevik uh, forces and agents and the local people. And seeing that, one could think that it would have been wise to leave. Especially since the early days of persecution, well, all those years of persecution were aimed specifically at the church and at Christ's servants, priests and nuns, monastics, and the faithful who remained faithful to the church. There was so much, so much hatred towards the church and violence against the church that it would have been maybe easier for St. John to leave. But he was committed to his ministry, and so he stayed. He remained there at his post, if you will. And so when they came for him that day, he probably expected it to happen. And again, they took him out outside the town, and they killed him. On this day, as we gather in prayer today to remember him, on this day, he gave everything to Christ, even his very life. St. John leaves us a great legacy, not only this temple which he built, but there are people here in this community whose parents and grandparents were baptized by St. John, who heard him preach the gospel, who were ministered to by St. John in moments of joy and in moments of sadness, at the beginning of life and at the end of life. And so his presence remains here in a very strong and real way here in this temple where he served. We should remember his example, that legacy, all everything regarding his legacy, 
but we should also remember that he gave all for Christ, even his life. He gave everything for the sake of Christ's church and the preaching of the gospel. That legacy that he gives us is ours to own. That example he gives us is ours to follow. We cannot live lives as Orthodox Christians in a mediocre way. We have to give to Christ 100% of our entire being, all that we are, all that we have, we must give to Christ, place before Christ, if we are to be his truly faithful and devoted servants, as was St. John. And so today as we celebrate this memorial, as we celebrate, it might sound an odd word, but as we celebrate his death, his martyrdom, we ask his continued prayers for all of us, for everyone who worships here in this temple he built, for all our families and loved ones, and indeed for all the world, that we, like him, might be completely devoted to Christ and be willing to give everything for Christ, even if it means our very lives.